All right, is this thing on? Red light, good. Microphone, check. Now, as usual, uh, here on YouTube, I am, of course, the most precise, consistent, and always on time with my TBRs. Um, don't fact check that. Here we are with what I'm reading in the month of October. Of course, I've already gotten going on a few of these since I'm a week into October already, but let's not worry about the details, okay? Here's what I'm reading in October. It's time to step back into the world of Tolkien because as Rings of Power has taught me, Amazon has no idea what they're doing. So I went back and uh, it, it did give one positive away from the show. Um, it made me want to actually go back and read Tolkien. So going back to the beginnings here with The Hobbit, of course, lovely, lovely Hobbit. Uh, this nice little 75th anniversary edition is gorgeous. It's got some, you know, introductory preface by Christopher Tolkien. And it's just a nice little copy of the book, all right? So super cool, excited about that. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be joining anybody to discuss this or not. I, I will absolutely have a review on my channel for this when I'm done. Uh, but what basically sparked this was I had been itching to get back into Middle Earth and read some of the books that I had never read before because I'd only read The Hobbit and The Lord of the Ring, you know, trilogy. And that's it. So I actually went out and I bought a few more things today as I'm going to expand reading my, you know, Middle Earth texts. So I was looking for children here and couldn't find it. I did recently get the Silmarillion. Uh, today I got, well, let me just show you. Today I picked up Baron and Luthien, of course, great, greatest love story ever told. Uh, I did get Tales from the Perilous Realm. Fantastic. Gonna read that one. Uh, I did order the Fall of Numenor in the... I'll post it here. Whatever this edition is, I forget. Uh, I did order that. That'll be coming next month in hardcover. And then I got the Unfinished Tales of Numenor and Middle-Earth right here. So these gorgeous editions are going to help build out my Tolkien shelf. I realized Barnes & Noble, at least in particular, has a lot of Middle-Earth stuff that is not by anyone in the Tolkien estate. Has no, uh, I guess, authenticity or like authorization by the Tolkien estate to be published. So you actually notice when, when I go to look at some of these books on the back, not these obviously, because these are fine, but there's a bunch of them that you'll see um, where there's, there's talking about like the, the hobbits of middle earth or like the dwarves of middle earth or some of the like illustration books or the lore of middle earth, it'll say on the back, like right above the skew that it's not like a, uh, I guess like authorized text. So basically saying it's not canon, like take it with a grain of salt because we did not say that this could be published. Um, so it's pretty interesting. I don't know if they're any good or if they're totally made up, but picking up these, I'm going to read all of middle earth in the next couple of months. And then of course I am continuing the journey of, Jesus, I just got real close to the camera, a Full Metal Alchemist. So the next six volumes, that would be seven through 12 here. Did I hold it up right? Nailed it. So again, definitely my favorite anime story that I've ever uh, encountered, engaged with, and now reading it is just fantastic because this is yeah, you know, this text is what Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is based off of directly. Everything from like the art style, the the characterizations, everything is is just such a refreshing memory. The series is super emotional. It's high stakes at times. It's hilarious. Um, there is some serious like emotional beats to this, whether happy moments or incredibly sad moments. There's a lot of pretty twisted shit that happens in the series. And it's just really well done. Um, I, I love some of the the artwork and the how hyper stylized and bizarre some of the panels get when when it's just it, it I don't know it just it does so much extra for the for the story and it makes it fun to read when you have just these totally ridiculous panels that bring out so much comedy just from a visual aspect. Um, it's great. I mean Armstrong is always hilarious in these. Anytime that Ed and Al are like scared or caught off guard or intimidated and they get these like super goofy faces like this. It's just, it's perfect. And of course, later this year, uh, I will be joining Elle, Patrick and Jess. I think that's it 
uh, for some discussions of Full Metal Alchemist once we actually wrap up all 18 volumes of the Full Metal editions. We did a sprint recently on Elle's channel where obviously we read for most of it, but we also talked a lot of Full Metal for a good bit of that as well. Um, and we're just talking all the time. It's it's so fun reading this for the first time and having people to sort of read and experience it with. So chatting with, you know, my other booktube buds about it is just, it's such a good time. Definitely check it out if you haven't. Uh, like I said in my last video, Full Metal is definitely worth your time. Even if you're not into anime or manga, it's it's worth a shot. Next up in October, and I did already uh, reread slash listen to one of these, and I'm almost done with another one. So this is going to be Deadbeat Proven Guilty and White Knight as part of a Dresden reread that I'm doing where I was asked to join J.R. Carroll. His channel will be here. Sarah Reads, her channel is here. Book is Chaz, his channel is here. And J.R. Carroll's buddy, who I don't think has a channel. If he has created a channel since we last spoke, I apologize, sir. But we'll be, uh, I believe, just back on J.R. Carroll's channel sometime in October, probably toward the end of October, to discuss these three bad boys right here. Uh, this is really the part of Dresden where it completely takes off into another uh, just atmosphere. Does that make sense? Sure. It takes off into another atmosphere. It goes through our atmosphere into another atmosphere. Sure. We'll go with that. Where every single book is just fantastic. Deadbeat really started it where some of the books before, like uh, Death Mask, you know, was great. Blood Rites had its moments. Summer Night was really cool. Deadbeat is where things really start to kick into a whole nother gear. Followed up by Proven Guilty, which is still one of my favorites, has one of my favorite endings to a Dresden book. So emotional, so many massive changes to the series that happen in that book. Uh, and then White Knight, of course, gets pretty crazy too. I mean, all these books just have fantastic characters. I mean, Jim Butcher is really like hitting his stride as soon as he gets to the deadbeat. The rest of the series is just fantastic after fantastic after fantastic book and it doesn't really let up and i just i i've always loved the pacing and the characters the action the dialogue damn near everything about the series it's probably why it's still my actively you know favorite fantasy series ongoing because it's so much fun and it's such a joy to read it's really hard to put down and then pair that with a fantastic narration by james marsters if you're into audiobooks definitely check it out maybe skip the first couple books because the audio quality is not very good but the rest of these are, are epic. They're amazing. I love the series and I can't wait to talk full spoilers for these three again because damn, I love these books. And I'm taking all kinds of notes. It's it's so much fun rereading these. And again, seeing things that haven't paid off yet that you know are coming, seeing decisions being made that you know are not going to go so well later on. It's just, it's excellent. And then last but not least, because it is October, what would be October without some vampires? So... Liana and I have decided to finally get around to reading this. We are going to read it together and absolutely talk about it because this is either going to be one of those rare moments where I'm totally caught off guard by a book and completely subverts my expectations, or it's exactly as cringy and uh, terrible as I kind of anticipate it to be. It's going to be this uh, YouTube darling book here of Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. Now, my only personal experience with Jay Kristoff is trying to read Nevernight and absolutely hating it and never touching it again. When this book came out, there was a lot of internet hate for it preemptively. And I feel like a lot of people that I never would have expected liking this book ended up loving it and then reading like everything that Kristoff writes and loving it. So maybe it's just an expectation thing for me. Maybe I'm going to love it. Who knows? But either way, we're going to get some great content out of it. It's going to be either a really great discussion about a book that surprised me and I end up loving, or it's going to be awful and we'll have a lot of fun making fun of it. But look forward to that happening toward the end of October for us to talk about this. If uh, Jimmy at uh, the Fantasy Network, you know, this guy right here, the like pro wrestler. Yeah, that guy. If he mans up and reads it, then he'll be joining us. But I'm not sure that he's going to. Because he's too busy to read a book about edgelord vampires. Jimmy, make time, okay? So, and I don't think Alan's going to join us either. I think that, that was, like, never going to happen. So it's just going to be me and Liana, and we're going to soldier on. Because, I mean, look at the shirtless vampire. And there's, like, a 
was that a, a bear or a tiger and a bird and a snake what is happening all right so that is everything that i have scheduled right now on my tbr uh, I know my last several videos on the channel have basically been TBRs and wrap-ups, which is probably kind of boring. Uh, I am having some, I'm having some, I'm in the in the midst of doing some reviews that will be coming up in the next week or so. So there's going to be a Why You Should Read of the Greenbone Saga coming up. I am finally going to have my uh, finale to my Wheel of Time reviews in A Memory of Light because I still haven't reviewed that for some reason. I'm gonna re uh, review a couple of other things as well. Obviously some of these coming up are gonna be live chats in lieu of a, a standard review. So Empire of the Vampire, I'll have a live show for The Hobbit, I'm not sure about yet, but all the Dresden stuff is gonna be a live show. So there's lots of more content coming. I just need to get around to it. So stuff is in the works. I promise it's not all TBRs and wrap ups. At least it won't be anymore in the near future. So enjoy the rest of your October, enjoy your reads. Let me know, you know, I'm curious. If you've read Empire of the Vampire and loved it or hated it, or it was just okay, let me know in the comments down below because I hear so many things about it. And it seems like, to my great surprise, a lot of people love it, which is surprising. So 